tonight on Border Security International. The vessel has been to a source country for narcotics. Commencing dive. You don't know what they are? Stand up, put your hand behind your back. I can see a shape in the middle of it. The busiest land crossings into Canada from the USA lies 40 kilometers southeast of Vancouver and is open 24 hours a day. What brings you into Canada today? When do you return home? How many people on board? An American who was recently allowed into Canada has been required to return to check in at the border. Sometimes we issue visitor records to people that we are concerned that they may not leave Canada at the end of their authorized stay. And can you tell me about your trip while you were here, what you were doing? I've just been seeing the sites in Vancouver, just kind of checking it out. I've never been here. Now he's requesting to stay in Canada for another 11 days. He's coming back to see if he can get another visitor record to go up to Alaska to work. It does not take 11 days to drive to Alaska. Yeah, but it does when you are not, you know, you want to take your time. You want to, like, see the sites and maybe stop somewhere for a day and rest and check it out or go hiking. What kind of work exactly are you going to be doing in Alaska? Like what? I'll be working at a hotel as a server. I'm suspicious because he hasn't brought all of the things that he was asked for last time. We asked for proof of his job in Alaska, and he hasn't brought that. So how do you know when you'll be starting work? Because, because I know I've talked to the manager from the company. How are you corresponding with the manager? By email. Why can you not show us the emails of you corresponding with your boss in Alaska? We want to see some sort of evidence or yeah. some sort of agreement between the two of you about your job in Alaska. I want to see when you're starting. I don't have any evidence of that. At Vancouver's air cargo facility, a suspicious package from India has officers taking a closer look. It's been declared as books with a really low value. Of course, the shipping cost for ship something at a really low value all the way to India makes it a bit suspicious, and India itself tends to be a source country for drugs. Instead of it being a consistent image throughout the x-ray, I could see a shape in the middle of it, which isn't what we'd normally see. So I'm going to take a look and see what it is that's hidden inside there. Vancouver is home to Canada's largest port, processing more than 120 million tons of cargo every year. And the Customs Marine Unit keeps watch over all of it. Our group plays an integral role to the safety and security of Canada. You know, when you think of border security, you mostly think of land borders and airports. Our officers are experienced, extremely well trained in the marine environment. Today, a freighter from Thailand has the marine unit on high alert. We're going to search a large container ship. We have a full search team. We know that there's some weapons on board that have been declared to us. We're going to make sure that those are stored properly and that the ammunition is stored separately and it conforms with our regulations. When you have a high-risk ship, what you want to do is secure a water side. So that's why we're out in our Zodiac right now. Make sure that there's no small vessels coming up pleasure craft coming up, taking packages off the ship, or people throwing it overboard. Doesn't look like anybody's out on deck, eh? No, it's quiet. With the Zodiac team monitoring the vessel, the dry team prepares for their inspection. We know that there are weapons here, so one plus one rule could be more, so keep sharp. The Pacific Highway Crossing is a designated point of entry for BC-bound buses. Next one. And all passengers are subject to examination. And this is all your bags? Today, officers are interested in an American traveler who claims he's coming to visit a friend for some Canadian r and It's his first time coming to Canada. He was pretty nervous about answering most of our questions. How long do you intend to stay there for? A couple of weeks. How are you getting back to the United States? More buses back. Have you been arrested for anything? Yeah. 
and what exactly have you been arrested for? Conspiracy to distribute. Did they catch you with a specific quantity of narcotic? They had me like 1,600 to 2,000 pills. He had been convicted of delivering and selling narcotics in the States. I have to ask you a very important question. Have you been around any narcotics recently? No. You have a lot of prescription type medications. Do you have any conditions that we need to know about? Like no, 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 no. I don't even know what some of those are. You don't know what they are? He found a lot of prescription medications, uh, some of which were not prescribed to him. It's a friend of mine. Oh, uh, why do you have her hydro coat on? She gave me them. <laughs> okay, all right. See so you stand up. I'm just gonna put your hand behind your back. Right now, you've been arrested for smuggling narcotics into Canada. Follow me. Hydrocodone, known on the street as hillbilly heroin, is illegal in Canada without a prescription, which means this traveler's holiday just went south. At the Douglas Land Crossing, an American is requesting an 11-day visitor permit so he can drive through Canada to start a new job in Alaska. We want to see some sort of evidence about your job in Alaska. I don't have any evidence of that. The officer suspects he may be planning to stay in Canada illegally. He doesn't have any proof that he's going to be working in Alaska, which doesn't make much sense to me. He just brought a paper showing me his proof of funds. You have access to, right now, only $1,200. You need to pay for gas. You need to pay for food. You need to pay for accommodations. And then you're going to have to support yourself when you get to Alaska. $1,200 is not enough. When you're coming to Canada, you need to make sure that you meet the uh, visitor requirements. You have to have funds to support yourself while you're here. I think it's enough. I can make it work. I'm telling you that it's not enough. I'm not satisfied that that's enough money to support yourself. Air Cargo, officers have discovered that this book from India contains more than just words. A field test will determine if the substance is contraband. The result of the ion scanner was that it did hit positive for opium. It's going to weigh it and see what we got. We ended up with about 89 grams of it. We'll contact the local police agencies, see where they want to pursue with it, forward it on to our other people, and see where it goes from there. Stand up. Just gonna put your hand behind your back. At the land border, officers are arresting a convicted drug dealer from the US after finding hydrocodone in his bag. Follow me. He's not allowed to be crossing the border with prescription medications that aren't in his name. So we arrested him at the time for smuggling. What we're going to do first. Hydrocodone is a synthetic opiate and a controlled narcotic in Canada. Is there any chance that you've ingested something that you're carrying across the border no. illegally, anything no. inside of you? No. Suspecting the traveler may be hiding something, Officers search his mobile phone. The plan is to go back with a police report from here saying my bags were stolen so I can do an insurance claim to get some quick cash. It doesn't take long to find evidence that this former drug dealer may be back in business. Uh, I felt some heat a couple months ago when I heard the ex-police chief was asking about the hostel. Tipped off by a couple of people that the hostel was going to get raided like four or five K in Molly and White. Molly is ecstasy. Why it would be cocaine or? It sounds like he's still in the game. Back at Canada's largest seaport, the Marine unit is searching a cargo ship from Thailand. We know that there are weapons here, so keep sharp. They have declared these weapons to us, but we want to verify that they're stored properly. It's a big deal for us in Canada to make sure that we know what's coming and going as far as weapons go. 
Thank you. Clear. Three Kalashnikovs. Clear. The weapons were all locked up securely. The ammunition was stored separately. Everything was in compliance with our regulations. Okay, Captain, you can lock it up. With the weapons secured, officers begin searching the rest of the ship. The vessel has been to a few interesting ports, namely um, Thailand, which is a source country for narcotics. This is one of the areas that is used for uh, contraband. It's a lifeboat, and traditionally people hide things here. So she's just checking here. It's just one more area that helps us with our risk assessment. Hey, don't go too far. Why did you have this under your bed? Oh, uh, that's not mine. Border security means protecting the Canadian economy, so officers are always on the lookout for travellers who may be coming to work under the table. What kind of business do you do? What do you do for work? What are your occupations? At Vancouver International Airport, a Brazilian traveller with plans to stay in Canada for eight days has Officer Danielle's attention. He's coming here for a sporting event. I'm a little uncertain in terms of what type of event it is, so I want to dig into that a little bit. So. Are you coming here to perform, to perform? To compete. To compete. compete yeah. There's a skateboard competition, is that right? Yeah, yeah. All right, this is all your stuff? Yeah. We're going to head into the back. I'm going to have a quick look through. You booked the ticket? Yeah. OK, and when did you do that? Two months ago. OK. When did you decide that you were coming to this event? Last year. So do you earn a living from your uh, competing as a skateboarder, or? I have uh, help with clothing and skateboard stuff. But are you getting any financial payment for coming to this event? Like, is anyone in Canada giving you money? In Vancouver, officers are concerned a sailor on board a freighter from Thailand may have an axe to grind with his fellow crew members. Why did you have this under your bed? Oh, uh, that's not mine. Hatchets are not prohibited in Canada, and there's no restrictions. I asked him why he had it, and I genuinely believe that he didn't know it was there. It's very unusual, though. So you have no problem if we give it back to the captain? Yes. I'm going to return it to the captain, let him know there may be uh, weapons of opportunity around. While the officers continue their cabin search, the dockside team is performing a search of their own. We have lots of tools and lots of different technology available to us, and one of the tools is the ROV, Remote Operating Vehicle. All right, got the tether? We can examine the hull of the vessel for something that's attached that's not supposed to be there, either by ropes or by chains or something that's even welded to the underside of the vessel. All right, it's in the water. Good. Just give it a minute to climatize, and then we'll uh, fire the power on. You got it? Got it. More and more, organized crime is going beneath the water to smuggle contraband into Canada. It's Romeo 3 uh, just commencing dive. So by moving forward on the ship, we'll be able to dive and find the sea chest that we're looking for. The sea chest is a water intake valve located on the ship's hull. It's also a great hiding place. So that's it there that we're looking at. Uh, you can see through the grates that it looks to be empty. There's nothing attached to the cables or the grates. We're going to inform the ship that uh, the hull dive is negative. We didn't find any contraband or weapons today. We were able to validate that the crew was in compliance with our laws. Four kilometers east at the Pacific Highway crossing, a convicted drug dealer from the States is arrested for bringing illegal prescription narcotics to the border. Like four or five K in Molly and white. Molly is ecstasy. White would be cocaine or? 
Text messages on the man's phone have officers suspecting he's still dealing drugs. So we've gone through your phone, right? We've gone through uh, the rest of your bags. We have recovered pills that you don't have a prescription on for. It. You had some messages that kind of makes us think that you might be still in the game. And we care about stuff coming across the border. That's yeah. what we, what's, yeah. that's our jurisdiction. When was the last time you sold any drugs that you weren't supposed to? Okay. Like, but it wasn't me selling drugs. It was me calling someone. You're the middle guy. You're the middle guy. Okay. Do you have any here? We're gonna go speak to the supervisor to request a personal search to ensure that he doesn't have any narcotics on his person or in his person. And lock us in. Okay. Ready? How this is gonna work is you're gonna take off a specific article of clothing that we asked for. You're gonna hand it to the senior officer here. He will search it. So we'll start with the sweater, please. The search is negative, but the traveler is still inadmissible. This time, his criminal record actually prevents him from getting into Canada. Which means the man has two choices. He can voluntarily withdraw from Canada, or we can take you to a hearing and hold you. You will get arrested, detained, and go before a judge. The traveler opts to return to the US. What we're going to do is we're going to do up the documentation for your, to take your pills, OK? We are not charging you criminally, OK? You'll head back to the States. You'll hand that document to the US Customs Officer. And that's it. We issued an allowed to leave. And we then executed the allowed to leave and walked him back to the US. At the land crossing, an American wants to extend his stay in Canada so he can drive to Alaska for work, but he's short on funds. I'm telling you that it's not enough money to support yourself. And with no evidence of a job in Alaska, the officer's doubt is snowballing. So where are you currently living then? Uh, Portland, Oregon is my residence. Like, my car is registered there. So when do you live in Portland? Uh, the last time I lived in Portland was the winter season of 2011. The winter season of 2011? Yeah. OK, so do you see where you're not making sense here? You're telling me that you have a residence in Portland, and the last time you lived there was 2011. Yeah. So you have not lived in Portland for two years. So do you have a residence uh, right now? No, I, I, I suppose I don't. You don't have a residence. So at this time, how can I be satisfied that you will leave Canada? At Vancouver International Airport, a Brazilian skateboarder claims he's come to Canada to compete. Are you getting any financial payment for coming to this event? Oh, uh, no. But Officer Danielle wants to know more details about the competition to ensure he's not coming to work illegally. Oh, this is the magazine from the last year. Over the last year. So this was from last year, then? Yeah. You're in here? Yeah. There's a photo. So here. OK. And you have a return ticket, right? Yeah. What day do you fly out? 22. This month? Yeah. So all these items, are these uh -huh. uh, ones that you're just giving away? Are you selling them? No, no, this is uh, you give for the crowd. Oh, yeah. Stickers. And they? You promote, yeah, you promote your sponsor. Got it. Going through his bags. Everything appears to be legitimate. He's got a return ticket, so everything is A-OK. -okay. You can start packing all this stuff back up. Everything? Yeah, everything. Okay. Don't leave anything behind. But this skater can't leave without first showing off some of his moves. I can honestly say in my years of experience, I have never had anyone display skateboarding techniques here at the airport, so it definitely is a first. I think you're going to win. Nicely done. Good luck. Bye-bye, guys. This is very important because today you have a traffic of people and drugs and all kinds of stuff, and we feel safer this way. Officers at the Douglas border crossing aren't convinced this Alaskan-bound American is being honest about his Canadian travel plans. So at this time, how can I be satisfied that you will leave Canada? So they're going to search his vehicle for more answers. He says he's driving through to Alaska, 
but he doesn't have any job agreement there. He can't tell me who he's corresponding with. He's telling me he can't get a hold of the emails. If he is moving to Alaska for the summer, then he should have a lot of clothes and suitcases in the vehicle, and he doesn't have anything really except a sleeping bag. I don't know if the officer explained this to you last time, but these are the visitor requirements that yeah. each person has to meet when coming to Canada okay. if they aren't a resident of Canada. Yeah. So we want proof of residency, proof yeah. of employment, and proof of funds to support their trip. All right. Okay. So right now, I have concerns with all three of these. Okay. Okay. The traveler is inadmissible and chooses to return to the U.S. I've just drawn up this document. It just says that you're voluntarily withdrawing your application to Canada and you'll be returning to the U.S. Okay. Just sign here, okay? I just got denied entry into Canada because I didn't have proper proof of my plans to go to Alaska. And this is the first time I've ever been denied. Now you're gonna go to the U.S., you're gonna give them this paper, okay? okay? I was just kidding, I get denied all the time. Thank you. Next on Border Security International. Have you ever been arrested? Yeah, I didn't do anything. I really didn't. I've got lots of guns. You know how many you are? No. Search away. Oh. oh. You do any cocaine on your trip? No. I'm going to give you another chance. Is there anything you want to tell me? That's Border Security International.